So you say your your name is? No, no. Robinson. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. I'm from what you is called your sentence. Jamaica. Yeah. I'm just giving my testimony pertaining to the person who I was. Um a young man who found in Colgate. But leave Colgate because of my parents couldn't afford it because they have many other kids to attend to. So I leave Colgate to St. Catherine. Um, started the school in St. Catherine, but end up in with some guys who are notorious criminals, gangsters. So living there, my uncle couldn't take the, the gangster life. So he tell me that to come back to watch race. So coming back to watch race, coming back to find peace. You know what I mean? So get involved with other friends. Then everything started to repeat itself. So I ended up in jail for 13 times. Go to prison. Get a shot in my head. Still will have the bullet inside my head. Been in coma for six months. Been in a wheelchair for one year after I get released from hospital. And the thing about it, I was that type of person who used to burn Jesus, burn church, burn Christianity. I was not a humble person. You know what I mean? And till one day I was passing the church. You know what I mean? Never been into a churchyard or inside of a church building. And I thought I was the only person that wake up in that community that morning. So when I reach at the church gate, I hear a lot of things like, you know what I mean, like service, some big thing going on in the church. So I went over and come out the window and took a look. You know, but before, before I come to the church window, a week before when I leave prison, I get entangled with a friend and I break my hand in his face. Never wanted to kill him, so I, I, I literally gave him a cup of right hand. I literally break my hand and walk away with him. You know, so I back to square one. Personally, back to square one. You know, see that like my life was still in prison. And a week after I was passing the church, early one morning, and I hear service going on, and I come and take a look at the window. And some sisters come out and say, come in, man. And come in, you know what I mean? And we just come in and squeeze at the back bench. And even though I was sitting at the back bench, I was looking for another bench behind me. You know what I mean? And I thought they finished with me now since I come in. So they come back and say, come up for your prayer. You know what I mean? And I literally hear one fight say, go on, you're not going to kill you. So on the way, I come up to the altar and they pray for me. It was an evangelist lady who were conducting the, the, the prayer meeting. It was a prayer meeting. And she said to us, who's to ever ready to give their life for God, must remain at the altar. And who don't ready to go back to their seat. So I wasn't going back to my seat, I was going back straight to the street. So when I reached in the, the center of the church, she stopped me and she said she know what I want and nobody know what I want, only God. You know what I mean? So at that time, when she, because she said that she know what I want, that, that forced me to stop. You know what I mean? Because I want to know if she really know. And when she tell me that I'm looking for peace, you know what I mean? I, you know, that, that word bring forth conviction. You know, so I take the front bench in the extreme part of the church. And I've been sitting in that bench for nine years after that morning. You know what I mean? And then my mother, she took sick with cancer. So I have to leave church, leave my work, and go home to take care of her. You know what I mean? And you know, it really shaped me up. Shaped me up a lot. You know what 
I mean, so literally in that process, my mother died and I started to see drinking of nothing but alcohol, drinking liquor night and day, night and day. You know what I mean? At once, at one moment, I was working in Shaw Park and met this girl. You know what I mean? And she said, she had bring me up to her home. And walking up to her home, that's that in the process of when I backslide. You know, walking up to her home. And I was, I, I was confronted with two men, gunmen. You know, attacked me beside that. They wanted to rob me. Take out my they said, boy, take out your money. You know what I mean? At that time, me kind of big and fat. So I took off my slippers and I took off. So the boy them, them fired three shots after me from a close range. And I run off. So meanwhile I run in, I swear that I get one of those shots. So the guy run me down and he catch me. And he put the gun to my head and pull the trigger. And the gun couldn't go off. So he was just knocking the gun on his leg for that gun to go off. I didn't wait for that gun to go off. I make my escape, you know. Coming back to Colgate the first at that night, I met Pastor Cadman on the street, and I tell him the whole incident, and he prayed for me at that time. But knowing God through in all of that, I didn't come back to church, and I was still drinking the liquor, frustrated, crying day and night over my mother's death. Until one of the night, my mother dreamed me and said, Donald, remember the Bible, you know? And that's the way I really come back to Christ. You know what I mean? Coming back to Christ, you know, is a, you know, you have to have a personal relationship with God. God won't check who you are and where you're coming from. Or what they did before. God won't check your heart, judge by your past. You know what I mean? God take you as who you are and turn you into who He wants you to be. And so it's amazing that <clears throat> your mother really appreciate the care yes, that you give to her. Because that's why. That's why. That's why. Why you think she? She, she, um, Jim. that her spirit, whatever means, however it happened, that the the Lord made it that she came back and talked to you, and 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 maybe because was it because you were grieving over her? Why maybe she was the only one that could reach you at the time? Do you think so? I don't know, but tell you the truth, I was I was mashed up mash up crush where at that time if you did look at me and know me before when I was a Christian before I was like you wouldn't identify me because they get so slim you know what I mean so slim that's it's unbelievable you know so when my mother gave me I tell myself that I rather to go back to God and favor a doctor than stay in a sin and death you know what I mean? And I just literally come back to church. So how many, how long now since you returned? I returned back to church literally for five years now. You know what I mean? And Wonderful. The truth is, being a Christian, you have to know God for yourself. You know what I mean? You have to have a personal relationship with God. Because if you don't have a personal relationship with God, you know what I mean? So many things can distract us. So many things can take you away. But when you have a personal relationship, it don't matter what you're going through. It don't matter what happened. You know what I mean? For rich or poor, for sickness or health. You know, you hold on, hold on at Christ. Amen. You know what I mean? Thank you very much for your testimony. Okay. <laughs>